You ready? Let's go. Right here is this small European city. Great pleasure to be in Geneva. Thousands of people from all around the globe come here twice every year to participate in very special and exclusive events. The events features one-of-a-kind auctions of jewelry, designer handbags, sneakers, wine, sports memorabilia, and most importantly, watches. And you must know it's not just about any watches, but those of the highest rarity and value, with sales exceeding $100 million in just a few days. Alright, but seriously, why is this small city hosting such events? Why people participate in the events and spend fortunes on the watches? I've just came back from the auction week in Geneva and I'm about to reveal it. It all started a few weeks ago when I finished creating an artwork. It was showing a super rare Patek Philippe watch. The man who ordered it asked me to bring it to Geneva myself during the auction week. I couldn't let go of this opportunity. After two days of driving all over the Europe, I arrived. Finally, I was about to find answers to my questions and see what's really going on there, to experience an adventure and change my perception of the watch world forever. And what I saw surprised me. I thought the place would be fun and full of shiny things, full of luxury cars and people wearing extravagant clothes. I was expecting a big party on the streets. The only extravagance was an African guy playing on a strange instrument. I've also seen a boat, and a cool swan, and a ferris wheel, and lots of people using bikes, lots of bikes. It was slow and quiet. If I came there as a tourist, just to see that sound, I would never have guessed that any auctions are going to take place there in the next few days. The only thing that tied the city to the watches were tons of boutiques and banners with the logos of luxury brands. They are everywhere. Rolex, Patek Philippe, Omega, Cartier, F. P. Jun, Audemar Piguet and like 30 other major players have their offices there. But why? I've made some research and the answer surprised me. And I found out it's all because of one guy who lived like 500 years ago. His name was Jean Calvin. He became famous for two things. Firstly, of pissing off the Pope and creating his own church. Also, he reformed laws in Geneva, which was much more serious. In that one day, lots of Genevans lost their jobs because the city was known for trading the jewelry. Since there's no greater motivation to get creative than the vision of starving, people of Geneva got creative very fast. After studying the new law, the smart Genevans found a loophole. You see, Making and selling small, useful things was not bad. So they decided to use their experience in creating small, complicated things in a different way. From jewelry, they switched to making clocks and watches. And you know what? In a few hundred years, they've become quite good at it. The Swiss have been miniaturizing their movements and making their watches more and more accurate. If you were Swiss and you weren't a farmer, you worked in the watch industry. The best industry in the world, which supplied watches to entire world, from workers to heads of state. I would like to say that they lived happily ever after, but one day things got complicated once again. The Swiss watch industry was challenged in the 1970s by the Japanese invention of the quartz movement. Quartz watches were cheaper, more accurate and more durable than mechanical Swiss watches. In no time they dominated the global market. Geneva had to get creative once again. Luckily, this time it was easier because our friend Jean Calvin was dead for like 400 years. Since it was impossible to win over Japanese on the consumer market, the Swiss decided to turn back to their roots, the once forbidden luxury goods, on which different rules apply. Watch brands focus on making expensive, fancy watches. This time it was not about selling accurate time machines, but rather selling a feeling of having something exclusive. Buying a watch became equal to buying a prestige. And guess what? It worked exceptionally well. Look at every young man today. He wants to have a Rolex despite his iPhone shows more accurate time every time. Okay, but what does it all have to do with auctions? You see, in the 1970s the market was full of second-hand watches and nobody was interested in them. They were worth as much as nothing. All of it was about to change very soon. Just after three years the first quartz watch was presented. The first watch auction in Geneva has launched and it was super successful. Over the next five years Ford world records were set for the value of watches sold at the auction. The market has been getting bigger and bigger ever since and Geneva has become a heart of watch auctions. Okay, but wait, how old watches from trash started to be seen as something worth 
millions of dollars. Firstly, they had to stop being perceived as something useless. So they were presented as something from the era that will never come back. As something that has a soul, unlike computers. As this rare collectible that will never happen again. And there are a few things that gives value to these collectibles. The value of the watch consists of few things. Reputation of the brand, unique features of the model like rarity or being complicated. The good condition is also something very important. But above all else is provenance. For example, a watch that was worn by a president, an astronaut, a movie star or a sports legend or a watch that was used in a war, an expedition or a movie will have the highest collectability factor. And the last thing is the thrill of the auction itself. The adrenaline rush and feeling of hunting for something very rare nobody has. I heard this, I think, in English. Wait, no. 1,200,000. Evelyn? No. At 1,200,000, selling to Rémi Guillemin on the telephone, 1,200,000. Okay, it all sounds that in order to come to Geneva for the auction week, you have to be like a hardcore billionaire watch collector. But stop for a minute, you don't. Because a few days before the auctions, the auction houses show all offered watches to the public. Anyone can come and see them. You can wear the watches and spend as much time with them as you want. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to see your holy grail. Because once the watches are sold, you'll probably never see them again. Since they'll be locked in the vaults of the new owners. So, what's the secret behind the watch auctions? For me, they are proof that when you combine creativity with passion, there will be no dead ends, only possibilities. You just have to spot them. See you in Geneva.